Welcome to Trial Site News Weekly Roundup. My name is Adrian, and I'll be going over some of our top news stories from this past week. Please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of future videos. This week, we start our roundup with virus-related news. EpicentRx announced that the US FDA has cleared the investigational new drug or IND application for AIM-1, an oncolytic adenovirus that is enhanced with a TGFB or beta trap transgene. EpicentRx plans to begin clinical trials with AIM-1 this year. Now, Bill and Melinda Gates have pledged $100 million to fight the COVID-19 outbreak. The effort involves capital infusion to test 15,000 molecules as a potential cure for the coronavirus at the University of Levin Laboratory of Johann Newtz. One of China's premier government-backed elite academic research institutions, Institute of Materia Medica, Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences, entered into a strategic research collaboration with a small Canadian-based biotech upstart called Cyclica to discover and develop antiviral drug candidates for COVID-19, while also exploring opportunities to develop multi-targeted antiviral compounds. Now, this partnership seeks to leverage artificial intelligence, or AI, to rapidly identify drug repurposing targets. There isn't enough time to follow the traditional drug development pathway in this case. Elsewhere, Nationwide Children's Hospital, or the NCH, a global hub for advanced gene therapy discovery, has submitted a proposal to the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, or the HHS, to pursue possible treatments for the coronavirus, or COVID-19. Genetically engineered natural killer cells in development there in Columbus, Ohio, to target cancer, as it turns out, could potentially be used to fight viruses. The Canadian federal government continues to direct funds to researchers across the nation committing an additional $20 million in research grants into the COVID-19 outbreak after reporting earlier a $7 million in February. Now, almost $7 million of this funding is reaching the Far West to Research Centers, British Columbia, or BC, including the University of British Columbia, Simon Fraser University, the University of Fraser Valley, and Royal Roads University, all have had projects selected for grants of up to two years and up to $1 million for medical countermeasures and $500,000 for social and policy countermeasures. And now we turn to lung disease-related news. Genentech announced that the US FDA has granted breakthrough therapy designation to Esprite for adults with unclassifiable interstitial lung disease, or ULD. The designation is based on, on results from a phase two trial, which suggests Esprite slowed disease progression in patients with ULD at 24 weeks. And now we turn to cancer-related news. Carofarm announced positive top-line results from the randomized Phase 3 Boston study evaluating once-weekly Expovio in combination with once-weekly Velcade and low-dose dexamethasone compared to standard twice-weekly Velcade plus low dexamethasone in patients with wide myeloma who have received one to three lines of therapy. Now, the Boston study met its primary endpoint of a statistically significant increase in progression-free survival, or PFS. Meanwhile, City of Hope investigators initiated a Phase 1, or first-in-man, clinical trial evaluating a CAR T-cell therapy for glioblastoma, utilizing a scorpion venom peptide called chlorotoxin to direct T-cells to target brain tumor cells. Now, preclinical research involving mice models revealed that the CLTX CAR T-cells result in tumor regression with no evidence of off-target effects. Meanwhile, in a notable preclinical research breakthrough, University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center and University of Chicago-based researchers have uncovered a gut-based bacterium that has the ability to accumulate in tumors and improve the effectiveness of immunotherapy in mice. 
UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson Cancer Center now has 240 open clinical trials, making it a major hub of clinical research in Texas. The right clinical trial can literally extend or save a life, although minority populations, African American, Hispanic, Asian, who are less than 6% participate in studies, can benefit less. As drug development moves toward precision-based models, non-white populations are getting left out behind due to this lack of participation. And now for liver disease news stories. A drug maker in India, Zytus Candila, has become the first pharma company worldwide to secure a regulatory agency green light for a non-alcoholic steohepatitis, or NASH, therapy, as the Drug Controller General of India approved the drug. And now we turn to autoimmune-related news. Chu Bichat, Cloud Bernard, clinical investigators, confirmed from an analysis of patients there in France that hydrotiditis suppurativa appears to be linked to food intolerance and gut dysobiosis. Now, trial site news has a large readership based struggling with hydrotiditis suppurativa, and our research team probes for studies that may be of interest. And we will keep you posted on this story as it continues to develop. And now for clinical trial-related news. Drug Bank, an Edmonton-based University of Alberta spin-off, created a vast database related to pharmaceutical drugs in what was an ambitious academic project. The startup began finding customers for the data in this database. The venture recently won $125,000 as a top prize in investment summit and now seeks additional capital infusions to grow. They are on a mission to organize the world's pharmaceutical knowledge to enable new drug discoveries and medicine. Now, elsewhere, Western Australia's medical innovation and research capabilities have received an infusion of support with $2.5 million from Lottery West. The funds will go towards Western Australia's National Imaging Facility Node to fund key equipment, including state-of-the-art MRI and PET-CT scanners. Now, in addition to replacing alien equipment, the support aligns Western Australia's National Imaging Facility Node with others across the nation. Now, Western Australians will benefit with improved health outcomes. Outcomes. The project is led by the University of Western Australia and the Western Australian Health Translation Network. Piedmont Transplant Institute, based at Piedmont's Atlanta Hospital, enrolled more patients in the potentially groundbreaking PRO-ACT clinical trial than any other participating site in the United States. The study, officially titled Prevention of Dimocho HCV with Antiviral HCV Therapy Post-Liver and Post-Kidney Transplant, has reached its enrollment targets, with Piedmont placing 9 of the 24 patients in the study, or 38%, according to the Raymond Rubin, MD Chief Scientific Officer and Transplant hepatologist at Piedmont Transplant Institute. Elsewhere, in a compelling story of brotherly love, familial connection, and the power of entrepreneurial energies, a 28-year-old Boston-based entrepreneur whose brother has Dutchian muscular dystrophy launched a biotech nonprofit organization to cure his brother using a novel, personalized, gene-based therapy. Now, he gained the attention of prominent research scientists in the region, and they now are pursuing a target. A recent Harvard graduate, Rich Horkin, is an inspirational young man. Meanwhile, research to prepare for NIH-funded trials centering on Achilles tendinopathy, the American Medical Society for Sports Medicine and its collaborative research network, CRN, are awarding $150,000 in research funds to prepare a team of investigators for a competitive submission of an NIH R34 clinical trial planning grant, and then to an NIH U01 clinical trial implementation grant via the National Institute of Arthritis and Musculoskeletal and Skin Diseases, or NIMES. Do you have any clinical news you'd like us to report on? If so, let us know. Contact information is in the box below. Thank you for joining us for this week's Trial Site News Roundup. And remember, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of updates, and we'll see you next time.